If the financial system is uh, evolutionary in nature, much like life on Earth, what is the origin of money on Earth? The origin of money predates coins. Most people kind of assume I'll talk about coins, but coins are relatively late developments. Back in ancient Mesopotamia, so I don't know, 5,000 years ago, there were uh, relations between creditors and debtors. There, there are even in the simplest economy uh, because of the way in which agriculture works. Hey, I need, I need to plant these seeds, but I'm not going to have crops for X months. So we have clay tablets in which simple debt transactions are inscribed. I remember looking at great numbers of these in the British Museum when I was writing The Ascent of Money. And that's really the beginning of money. The, the minute you start recording a relationship between a creditor and a debtor, you have something that is quasi-money. And that is probably what these um, clay tablets mostly denoted. From that point on, there's a great evolutionary experiment to see what the most convenient way is to record uh, relations between creditors and debtors. And what emerges uh, in the time of the ancient Greeks are coins, metal, tokens, uh, sometimes uh, a valuable metal, sometimes not, usually bearing the imprint of a state or a monarch. And that's the sort of more familiar form of of money that we still use today for very, very small transactions. I expect coins will all be gone by the time my youngest son is my age, but but they're a last remnant of a very, very old way of of doing of doing simple transactions. By and, the way, and when you say coins, you mean physical coins. Because I'm talking the term about <laughs> coins has been rebranded into the digital space. Yeah, not as well. coin based coins, actual coin coins. You know the ones that jangle in your in your pocket and you kind of don't know quite what to do with once you have some. So th- th- that that became an incredibly pervasive form of 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 paying for things. Money's just a it's just a crystallization of a relationship between a debtor and a creditor and coins are just very fungible. Uh, you know, whereas a clay tablet relates to a specific transaction, uh, coins are generic and fungible. They can be used in in any transaction. So that was an important evolutionary advance. If you think of financial history, and this was the point of the ascent of money, as an evolutionary story, there are punctuated equilibria. Uh, people get by with coins for a long time, despite their defects as a means of payment, such as that they can be debased, they can be clipped. Uh, it's very hard to avoid fake or debased money entering the system. But coinage is still kind of the basis of payments all the way through the Roman Empire, out the other end into the so-called Dark Ages. It's still how most things are settled in cash transactions in the early 1300s. You don't get a big shift until after the Black Death when there's such a need to monetize the economy because of chronic labor shortages and feudalism begins to unravel that you you just don't have a sufficient uh, amount of coinage. And so you get bills of exchange. And I'm really into bills of exchange uh, because, and this I hope will capture your listeners uh, and viewers' imaginations, when they start using bills of exchange, which which are really just pieces of paper saying, you know, I owe you over a three-month period while goods are in transit from Florence to London, you get the first uh, peer-to-peer payment system, which is network verified, because they're, they're they're not coins. They don't have a king's head on them. They're just pieces of paper, and the verification comes in the form of signatures. And you you need ultimately some kind of guarantee if I write a, an IOU to you, bills of exchange. I mean, you don't really know me that well. We only just met, so you might want to get endorsed by. I don't know, somebody really creditworthy like Elon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we we actually can see in the late 14th century in northern Italy and in England and elsewhere, the evolution of uh, a peer-to-peer network system of, of payment. And that's actually how world trade grows, because you just couldn't settle long oceanic transactions with coinage. It just wasn't practical. All those 
treasure chests full of doubloons, which were part of the way in which the Spanish Empire worked, were really inefficient. So bills of exchange are an exciting uh, part of the story, and they illustrate something I should have made more clear of the ascent of money, that not everything used in payment needs to be money. Classically, economists will tell you, ah, oh, well, money, money has three different functions. It's You've heard this a zillion times, right? It's a unit of account, it's a store of value, and it's a medium of exchange. Now, there are three or four things that are worth saying about this, and I'll just say two. One, it may be that those three things are a trilemma, and it's very difficult for anything to be all of them. This point was made by my Hoover colleague, Manny Rincon Cruz, last year, and I still wish he would write this up as a paper because it's a great insight. The second thing that's really interesting to me is that payments don't need to be money. And if we go around, as economists love to do, saying, well, Bitcoin's not money because it doesn't fulfill these criteria, we're missing the point that you could build a system of payments, which I think is how we should think about crypto, that is isn't money. It doesn't need to be money. It, it's like bills of exchange. It's network-based verification, peer-to-peer -peer transactions without without third-party verification. When it hit me the other day that we actually had this precedent for crypto, I got quite excited and thought, I wish I had written that in the ascent of money. <laughs>